Good morning, everybody. It is 3.56 in the morning. I'm getting up earlier and earlier so I can actually get this stuff done on here. And first thing this morning, I want to go take this fuel tank out and rinse this thing out with a hose. So I'll be right back. We're back. Everything I've done is totally legal. I have rinsed out the, all the rust inside that tank. There was just like, like the, as the rust came off the walls with the vinegar, it just collected in these, <laughs> these big piles on the bottom. So yeah, I still don't really know what to do with this thing. Let's try the key in case we're lucky. But I plan on putting some time into this today. Yeah, I was really hoping like maybe I would, there was a chunk of rust in there that I could wash, rinse out or something that would make all the difference. Ay, ay, ay. All right, I hate to potentially damage the key. We gotta make an effort here. Yeah, it's just nothing happened. I'm starting to feel more and more like I have to abandon this dream of having a <laughs> of having a key that works on the fuel tank. I can totally get a fuel cap that is not keyed that you just take on and off like it's just a generic one. They they totally make those. So that is an option. Let's pour some of this rust dissolver in, right into the key lock. Let's see what happens with that. It's not really bubbling. It's not going anywhere though either. This is stuff I had before that I poured in. This is like ATF and whatnot and from the gas tank. Just trying to treat that. But yeah, that will all go to, we have a hazardous waste place in town or whatever, so I'll take this there. Like the city runs it, which is kind of one of the advantages of living in town is that they have stuff like that. I can go for free and just have this, to, they'll, they'll take like, old oil and stuff. So yesterday I had a shitty tip of the day and I actually got that tip from my dance instructor in college. <laughs> yes, I had, I had a dance instructor. Uh, I didn't go to college for dance. It's part of the core requirements. I ended up taking a, a modern dance class and it was taught by this lady who claim to fame was that she once taught Madonna how to dance. She had, apparently early in her career, she had taught at the, like, the University of Michigan, right at the time that Madonna went there. We're talking about Madonna the singer, you know, the very famous singer. And so this lady, one of the things that she taught, one the, she would talk about in class was, you know, posture and how important posture was. And so, she is the one who was like, it will help you go to the bathroom better. <laughs> so I just, it was kind of, I just found it interesting. So, and I, and it was, it's true, man. Good posture is, is helpful for a lot of things, including going to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Look at all this rust. It's just. There was just piles of this like inside the gas tank in general. And there will be in the future. I'm sure there'll be more piles like that. It's just bonkers. All right, so I actually want to take a closer look now at this point at this swing arm. Because the other day we were messing with it. I, I'm pretty sure that the axle on that thing is bent. So I want to try and take a better look at it. So I'm just going to get my little wrench on the axle itself and spin this around. And if... If this thing is moving, <laughs> there's movement in there, then we gotta, this is bad. That's a bad sign for us. It does seem like there's some movement in there. I'm seeing most of it on the, on this guy, on the, the rear set, the little foot peg, which is indicative, I think, of that the bend is somewhere close to the foot peg. I don't really see it on the swing arm. Like here, take a look at this. So watch the foot peg. I'm, I'm trying to keep the foot peg as steady as I can, but watch it move. I 
Like that movement is more than just me wiggling the wrench. That's that's like a variation within the the bolt head here. At least that's how it appears. So I can I can see the swing arm moving. I guess if I if I look like right right here, I can see it going up and down just a little bit. Let's see if uh let's see if you can see it. So yeah, let's take the swing arm, let's take the axle out and take a, look, a closer look at it. Try and clean this guy off a little bit. In theory, this is bent. We could possibly put it, put it in the lathe, take a, get a real good look at how, how bent it is. And You could totally, um, I could have this bent back, I'm sure. I know that's possible. You could put it in a, basically a little jig in a hydraulic press and then have like a little, little gauges, dial gauges, you know, that see how much out of round it is and you can press it back exactly the way you need to. Um, Maybe this isn't bad enough. My experience, this is all with like front stuff, front suspension, like the stanchion tubes and stuff. Like those can be bent just a little bit and you're, you're in trouble. Um, I've never had a rear swing arm bent axle before. So I don't know if you could have what the tolerances are for this thing. Let's put it in the lathe. Cause I don't, I don't see an obvious problem right there. So, Let's put it in the lathe and then we'll be able to see it wobble better. <laughs> Will it fit in here? Oh yeah. All right, we got plenty of room in there. So let's take a closer look at the swing arm itself. So this guy, this is where the wheel mounts, obviously. Um, and then what's interesting about the VFR, the way they did this, because it's a single sided swing arm, which means you can mount the wheel directly on like this, the way you would a car. You can see it's got the little studs sticking out here with the little lug nuts, just the way you would a car wheel, which is kind of cool. And that's fun because you can take the wheel on and off quicker and easier but with a motorcycle you've also got to be able to adjust the chain here right because the chain you put a chain on and the chains actually stretch a little bit over time and so you've got to be able to adjust this this rear sprocket where the chain sits on you've got to basically be able to move that forwards and backwards uh, and so the way it's done on this vfr is that they've got like a tooth spline thing going on inside here that on mine is actually broken. <laughs> but you can, in theory, you can, I have a tool, you, like a little spanner wrench kind of thing you stick on here and you can rotate that around and that will, it, that will move this rear sprocket forward and back. I don't know how well you can see. But if you can see in there a little bit better now, like there's like the little teeth are broken off right over here. There's one tooth up here that is not completely broken off. I don't know if that's from the accident. I doubt it. I, I bet you that's from just abuse. Like somebody tried to adjust this and just really messed it up. That'd be my guess. I don't know how that would happen otherwise. But yeah, it is pretty gnarly looking. So there's that. I'm going to need to at some point get in here and take this whole thing apart. I mean, there's... Uh, there's bearings and stuff in here. Obviously this thing, whole thing rotates around and so I might want to replace bearings and whatnot. I, I'd first like to get to the point where I can put a wheel on here and actually see if the swing arm itself, 
is straight. Because <laughs> there's a possibility if, if we've had enough force on this thing to bend the axle up here, there's a possibility that the swing arm itself could be twisted or something to some degree. I hope not, of course, but I mean, you just don't know. This is all aluminum and it's like big, it's pretty heavy cast aluminum. And so I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that this is stronger than the axle was, where this could take a lot more force than the axle. And so that this does not bend first. I'm hoping that's the case. And with aluminum, a lot of times it doesn't bend so much. I mean, aluminum can bend, but it oftentimes would crack. It'll crack quicker than steel will, that's for sure. But you definitely can bend it. Well, you can also see that I am missing, I'm missing two lug nuts here. So I need to check these out and see, see what size these are, what size threads this is. And then so I can order some more. So if we come over here, I've actually got a little wall of little thread guys so you can tell what's what i don't know if i've got well this looks like it should be big enough right so it looks like it's an m12 of some kind not sure what pitch it is it's that pitch right there it's that thread pitch so what is this one in the middle so m12 by one and a half that's our stud. The M12, that's the diameter of how wide that is across of the stud. And then one and a half, that's the thread pitch. So we've got some wires to deal with today. Yesterday on this throttle body, I noticed that a mouse had chewed on some of the wires down here. So we've got some right there. We've got some right here that have been chewed on. Yeah, so we got to mess with these wires, clean this stuff, try and fix this. So what is this one's going to our throttle position sensor right here. So I'm going to unplug that guy. And we'll deal with this first. How bad are these wires? Are they, do I just need to like insul re-insulate them or do I need to replace them. There's basically one wire that's been chewed up because it looks like some of the actual copper has been chewed out of there. So that makes it more complicated, but you know. All right, so I'm going to have to de pin this thing. Let's take a picture to remember where, what order these wires are in. I'm going to try and de pin. I'm going to try and de pin. All this, these three wires here, and then I can pull all this sheathing off of here, and then we might undo this whole little wiring sub harness here and replace that wire from start to finish, maybe. Hmm, but I don't know if I have, yeah, that then I'm gonna need to have the actual pins on the end, new ones of those, and uh, these are specialized where I don't have that, so we're gonna have to splice in a wire right in here. So I've got my little depinning tool set here. We'll see how successful I am at actually depinning this thing. These connectors can sometimes be in like these sort of stepped series sorts of things where you have to take the connector apart to a degree and then before you can even start to depin anything. Cause yeah, that little white piece inside there makes me think, oh, I have to replace, I have to sort of remove that white piece before I can even think about doing anything else. Pre I don't know if that's the case, but previously that has been my experience with these sort of newer style connectors. The old style connectors were very simple, but they were not waterproof. Whereas these guys are waterproof, so that's cool. They're sometimes harder to depin. Yeah, I just I don't even know where to start on this. All right, you have you have to see this. I managed to remove this little white cap, and the way this removes is just fascinating. So it goes, it slots in there nice and easy. Um, and then you actually, there's like, I found that there's a little recess down inside here and I can get this tool down in there and you're supposed to leverage that up just a little bit and then pull the whole thing up. 
Isn't that crazy? Because there's these little clips down there that you sort of leverage those up. And now I can get in here and see the actual pins and possibly depin that that one wire. And you could get away without doing this. I think it will be neater. I'll have a neater result once I do depin this thing. Now there's just another little lever sort of clip in there that I'm trying to pull up so I can pull that wire back. Yeah, you have to have some patience to do this. I got it off. It's actually pretty slick once you realize how it works. It's nice and simple, but it was a pain. It was the opposite of the direction I was going in. <laughs> so now we've got our straight wires here. I can pull this little sheath off, which was my goal, and that will make that will make this thing a lot neater, I believe, and finished product. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this little pull this guy off. At least I think. So I've got one that needs some insulation there and that another one here that I need to like put in a whole nother section. So I would really like this to come off. There we go. And so now I can come in here, I can slide on some heat shrink, whatever to act as insulation on here. And there's some heat shrink just sitting right here. So this guy just needs a little bit. I don't know if you can see this one, but it's just got like a little little bite taken out of the insulation. So I need to cover that up so it doesn't, you know, ground to something at some point and cause havoc. So if I can get this little bit of uh, heat tape over that, we can shrink that down. This does not want to go over that piece of rubber. That is not going to work. I need to get a fatter piece of heat tape. So got some more heat shrink here. This one's a little bit fatter, which goes on no problem. Just need it to shrink, shrink more to make this work. All right, let's see if we can make it work. Let's see if it will shrink enough. All right, it's shrunk down. So that should be adequate for our needs. Moving on to this next one here. This is the more complicated one. I need a spare piece of wire. So I clip that out and put a new piece of wire in there. So I'm gonna grab my wire, spare wire stuff is up here. My little electronics box is up top here. So in here, we should find, aha, a whole bunch of little wires like that. We should even have some in the correct color. So this one might, might work. All right, so here we are. Is it the right diameter? the question, the right gauge. Looks like it's a little bit small. All right, so this one is fatter. Is it fat enough? Yeah, so that looks like the exact same gauge. So, and it's close enough in color for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. A little wire snippers. There's that piece off. That piece off. Now we'll go ahead and strip this back. And got my little connectors right here. This is how I like to do stuff. I just sort of manually crimp them together once again. So put a little wire in here, crimp that guy down. I like to sort of pre-form the end a little bit. 
get it on here. And then crush it into place. And there are like much better pliers for this. Like there's a whole, I know a guy who who uses them and they are super nice. This makes this stuff even better. Like I thought it was cool when I got these pliers. I thought these were like super advanced, but there are even more advanced, like professional grade type pliers um, that I would love to own but they're like 80 bucks. So I don't own them. <laughs> Someday, maybe. Um, all right, so then I'm gonna uh, strip this, the end of our, our new wire, put that guy on here as well. Get this sort of set up and we'll just feed him in there. So that bit there is crimped on. So let's move on. Let's see how, how big of a piece do we need on here? We need something like that. So go ahead and cut him. Go ahead and cut this guy like right here. I, I don't know if any of you guys have like know, heard about in terms of like riding gear and stuff. I don't know how big or how much you guys are into that. I know like some people, you know, they find a thing that works for them and then, you know, they stop looking. But uh, I'm looking here recently because I'm gonna be needing some new new riding pants. Like I like to get geared up, you know, where I, because if I do come off the bike, which just because of my nature, I feel like, or my luck or whatever, <laughs> I feel like it's a real possibility. I'm not super confident about that not happening. So, I like to gear up and have stuff that is armored and abrasion resistant and all of that stuff is be as protected as I can be. But of course, I also like the idea of like looking cool, you know, <laughs> while, I, while I'm on my cool motorcycle. I also look for stuff that is fashionable, at least in my eye, you know? And so I, I tend to, like I have motorcycle jeans. That's kind of what I ride in, but they're like ones that have Kevlar, and they've got a little armor in them as well. The ones I got are cheap, cheap Amazon ones though, right? They're breaking down. They're not lasting that long. They're not, they're not quality gear, you know? It's not quality material. I am now like, well, looking at quality made stuff. Like how, how much better would that be? In my little research, I've stumbled upon these jeans that are uh, made with Dyneema, which is like a plastic, some sort of, you know, advanced plastic type thing that they weave in to the cotton to make the jeans. And I found that you can get it, that they make the cotton in different, uh, or they make this material, this combination material in different quantities. And you can get it up to like, I've seen it as high as like 54% Dyneema. Um, and Dyneema is supposed to be great because it's supposed to be like more abrasion resistant than leather. Um, and so like before, like most jeans you would see would have like standard cotton jeans material with Kevlar backing, it's a whole separate layer um, on the inside of the jean. And that's what gave you your resistance was the Kevlar on the backside of the jean. Uh, the jean stuff just made you look cool. Uh, but this stuff, you're supposed to, it has no Kevlar backing. It's just the Dyneema gene. So it's just the gene material and that's it. And that is supposed to be even better than the Kevlar, supposedly. I realize that marketing is a thing and that that may not be in, you know, the ultimate truth on that matter. But I am like, I'm, I was pretty excited about it. You know, the possibility that uh, you could basically have like straight genes and then, so that led me to the idea, like I've sort of been a proponent of, or, of having the, the armor in there as part of the jeans. You know, we had these, these little pockets in the side of the jean where the armor goes. And it's all one little, little unit or whatever. And I kind of was like, yeah, that makes sense to me. That seems like the most, the simplest, best solution. Um, but now I'm kind of a proponent of, this is more of like a motocross thing where you've got the the armor is like a whole separate thing that you wear in this inside like a spandex 
little outfit that you wear underneath your clothing. I made a mistake here because my plan was before I crimped that last part on, but to slide some smaller diameter heat shrink up on there and then I could slide it back down and shrink it, but I, I spaced out, man. So now we're gonna use the stuff that's a little bit too big, bigger than ideal. I'm gonna slide this stuff down and we're gonna make it work. But I don't know if anybody has any experience, if anybody's actually owned this Dyneema stuff. There's like basically two companies I could find that actually um, made this stuff. One of them's one here in the US and one of them's over in Europe. And uh, I don't know, I, I would like to get some at some point. The one here in the US does not, they're not currently available. I don't know if they're still gonna make this stuff or not. It's one of those sort of niche, moto inspired, you know, clothing brand things. So they kind of, their, their thing is not entirely making motorcycle gear, but it's part of their brand, you know? And they mainly make just stylish whatever clothing. All righty, we did something. Oh, that is so nice. Let that cool down just a little bit. And then we'll put stuff back together. We'll um, slide this guy back on there and we'll tape up the rest of it. We might put some big heat, heat shrink over the top of this guy. But let's try and start getting this, making this happen. I'm gonna stagger this in here because it was hard to get out because all these little rubber bits at the end. Those guys just kinda wreak havoc. They don't like to share space, you know? So I was just curious if anybody has, had, has tried that. I know they also have like Cordura, which is also this kind of, a, kind of a similar concept where it is a higher abrasion sort of synthetic material and they've made jeans that have Cordura weaved into them, but they usually typically also still have the Kevlar backing on them. So that kind of gives you an indication of how, how significant this Dyneema is supposed to be in terms of abrasion resistance. Um, and I'm curious if anybody else, if anybody's actually tried it. Like, I really want to know, do they feel anything like jeans or are they a completely different beast, you know? Um, and how durable are they? Like, really, like, and when you wash them, because that's kind of what I worry about with, like, a lot of the uh, synthetic stuff. When you wash it, you know, if you wash it, if you put it in the, in the dryer and stuff on, like, heat, like you'll break down that synthetic, or usually, typically you don't do, you don't wanna do that with synthetic materials, because, uh, or synthetic fabrics, because it will break them down over time and they won't last as long. And so, I was just curious if anybody has played with that at all. In theory, the Cordura stuff would be a similar concept. I think even the Kevlar really is, is also like a, a synthetic plastic, basically, right? I don't know, is it? I'd have to look it up. I haven't looked that up. All right, I've got one that's stuck right there where I can't quite reach it. Let's see if we can push it out. Got some welding rod here. See if we can get in here and just push that sucker through there. See the end of it. There we go. All right, so that is much better. And then yeah, we could just tape this up if we want. Um, we've got some of this fatty heat tape here as well, which I hardly ever get to use. So that might be fun to throw on there. I don't know if this heat tape is actually a good idea because I think it might, this other stuff, I'm not sure how well, well that's gonna respond to heat, but I think we're gonna find out. That worked pretty good. There we go, it has been repaired. Now we just gotta put this little guy back on the end, which involves referencing our picture that we took earlier. So I get things in the right order. So if we orient it like this, we have our pink and then the green and then the green with the stripe. There we go. Now it looks just like our picture. And now we can go ahead and put this guy back on there and it should just, Clip back in. <laughs> Should just clip back in. There we go. 
All right, so now this has been repaired. I can go ahead, plug this back in. And we are good, look at that. I'll take another look down here for more mouse action. Yeah, like this guy. All right, so this guy has also got a little bit of a bite out of it. It just needs some heat tape on there. But again, I want to, uh, want to depin this thing. So it says, it's the same, you can tell it's the same company. That's, you know, these are the same connectors made by the same manufacturer. But this one is slightly different again. All right, I got it out. <laughs> I went down a couple rabbit holes there, but I eventually got that out. I'm not sure it does me much good though, because the way this is done, they put this little plug, this rubber plug on here before they crimp the wires on there. So it's like one whole unit. No matter what you're doing, you can't really like pull these pins back through. So that is a little annoying. So this one almost makes sense to like, Cut it, cut the wire, put a sheath on there, and then put everything back together. So I guess that's what we're doing, man. All right, just gonna cut it. I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna go crazy. All right, now do this side. All right, so that is now clipped back together. I mean, we're finding a way. <laughs> we're finding a way to fix this bike man it does you some might say it does not want to be fixed but we're finding a way to do it there's there's a lot of little things wrong with this bike i mean this might be the worst bike i've ever i've ever tried to fix the more i work on it i feel like this bike has been sitting longer and longer <laughs> i'm gonna put this wire connector back together and then i'm going to uh probably call it a day it's probably enough for today so see you tomorrow